Hey, good afternoon, you guys. I hope that you're uh, that you're doing well. Um, sitting there today, and uh, I was praying this morning, and uh, well, I I was going to preach on. I was going to share a message on Python uh, today, uh, but I kind of felt. I was going to share on Python, and I'm going to share on the Python spirit, but not today. Probably uh, probably tomorrow. Um, but I was going to share on the Python spirit. But then I received a... Well, I'll wait for a few people to get on here. I'll wait for a few folks to get on so I don't feel like I'm talking to myself. So uh, I think that uh, this would be a good message. I don't usually do this, but... Uh, but I think that this would be a really good message for you guys to share. I think that the message that I'm about to share, this is another, hey, what's up, Heather? This is another one of those messages, like I'm not just shooting from the hip. I have like, like a prepared message here. This is the message that I shared Friday night. This is a message that I've been uh, sharing kind of all over the place and I'm seeing just crazy amounts of, uh, of fruit from this message. So this is one that if you would share it, because I think if you will apply what I share with you in this message, I think that you're going to see, you're going to, it, 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 the change your life. Okay. And I don't say that, like, I don't say that lightly. All right. Just, just so you know, I don't say that lightly. I don't, you know, I, I believe that there is that that everything I share that there's something in it, but I think right here this message that I'm about to share, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference uh, as to whether you're going to be a victim or whether you're going to be victorious. It makes all the difference on, you know, are you are you going to be an overcomer or are you going to be overcome. So, uh, super, super important message, uh, super message, super important message that I'm about to share, like straight up. Um, and really, you know, as we're waiting for some folks to get on and do me a favor, please share this, like seriously, if you would, I don't, I don't usually say that, but I'm just seeing crazy amounts of fruit coming from this message. Um, while I'm, uh, while we're waiting, you know, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. Um, just some things that the Lord has, uh, has spoke to me. Doing pretty good, Christian. How are you, my man? Um, just some things that the Lord has spoken to me. I was praying this morning and asking the Lord, uh, what he wants to do, you know, what, like what, like what he's, uh, what he has in, in store, uh, you know, moving forward. Um, I felt like the Lord, uh, the Lord gave me a word and the word was discipleship. That's what the Lord said. And I know that I've been doing a lot of discipleship concerning, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit and deliverance and healing. Do me a favor, guys, please share this, share this message. Uh, but what I feel like what I'm going to be doing after I do this six weeks of, um, altar worker trainings. Uh, moving forward, I'm going to start like uh, a discipleship program type thing, discipleship classes, where I'm literally talking about all aspects of the faith. Um, where I'm gonna, I'm gonna have classes. I'm gonna have, you know, just covering a bunch of different topics. You know, like salvation. I'm going to cover topics on, you know, who is God the Father, who is Jesus the Son, who is the Holy Spirit. Uh, sharing topics on, you know, repentance, sharing on, you know, topics like, uh, you know, just uh, character and integrity of a believer, different things like that, tithing, um, the church, sharing uh, messages on, you know, and really just really focusing on discipling, discipling people. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. It's a little bit, uh, you know, it, I can't say that it's out of my you know, it's that it's a, uh, you know, I, I did that for quite a while, actually, at my old church. Um, but I've really been focusing on healing and deliverance, obviously. Okay, so anyway, so uh, knowing your authority. Again, this is, uh, this is not a shooting from the hip message. This is a, 
I have notes message. Um, so anyway, I, I believe that if you will apply what I say to you here, you know, the things that I'm going to tell you, I, I really believe that it's going to change your life, honestly. And I don't say that. I don't say that lightly, okay? Now, so what was it that spurred me on? What was it that spurred me on to change my, my message? Because, again, like I said earlier, today I was going to speak on the Python spirit. And that will probably be tomorrow that I do speak on the Python spirit. But I, I Friday night, I preached this message. I had a healing service Friday night. Saw crazy awesome things happen. But um, so I shared this message Friday night. And then afterwards, we had a time of, you know, healing ministry, deliverance ministry. Saw a lot of people get healed. Saw a lot of people get delivered. And what was really cool was that I have a team of people that I'm taking to Guatemala. We're going to Guatemala November 11th. And so, you know, the way I view missions trips are, you know, is opportunity. These are opportunities for me to disciple people into, into like doing the greater works, healing and deliverance and evangelistic, you know, and so that's my focus when I go on these trips. But prior to going on the trips, I try to like I, I schedule different I schedule different meetings, you know, and I try to get as many people from from the the, the missionary teams that I'm building, I try to get as many of them to the meetings as I can so that we can begin and I have them on my as a ministry team. And the whole point is to get people to get their, their toes wet, to dip their toes in healing ministry, right? So some of them, so they came, so we came together Friday night and I've, I had now on my team, I, when I assemble missions teams, I'm not looking to, to assemble the, you know, like, you know, and the A team of like, you know, the A team of, you know, ministry experts. No, really what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to find people that have never really stepped out and saw people healed. I'm looking to find people that have never really cast a demon out of somebody, that have never really uh, ventured into the world of, you know, healing and deliverance and all that. And the goal is because the goal is to take these people and to put them in the position where they're stepping out and and where their where confidence is being built, right? Because that way, you know, when they come back to the United States, they're gonna keep going. Well, anyway. So Friday night I had a group of people. I had some of them that had, had done this before, that had that 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 pray for the sick, people that are even moving in their own ministry now. And I had people that have never done that. And I said, come on, get up here. Well, anyway, I had, uh, there's a couple named Aubrey and Steven that are on my team. I felt like the Lord wanted me to ask them. And so I did. Now they had never prayed for anybody before, really. I mean, they'd never really done this before. Maybe, maybe a, a smidge, okay. Um, but never like, probably never like what we did the other night. Well, anyway, they came to the meeting and I preached on, I preached this message. And then afterwards we had a time of ministry and Aubrey was with me and we, we did some deliverance. I cast, you know, dealt, you know, uh, um, you know, we, uh, we prayed for, you know, this little girl, little girl got delivered and, and, and Aubrey assisted me in that. Well, anyway, you know, and Stephen, he was, he prayed for some people and, uh, well, that was that. So anyway, yesterday I had to call them. I had to I had to contact them. Um, thank you, Derek. I appreciate that, dude. We had I had to call them to ask them a question about our trip, and I got a message saying we're over at our neighbors praying for deliverance. Okay, we're over we're over at our neighbors praying for deliverance, and I was like, huh, you don't say. Very interesting because these are, you know, these guys are, you know, they had never not really stepped out in that. Like, I mean, they were, they've, you know, not say that they've never ministered to any, prayed for anybody, but never like, you know. Anyway, I get this message today from Aubrey. I guess they were, or I talked to them that night. I, uh, I guess that they, uh, 
you know, they were over there and they were praying, they were praying for somebody for deliverance and they were praying for, you know, praying for this guy whose back was messed up. And well, anyway, she sends me this message today and they had messaged her saying that, you know, that, that he was healed and, and how amazing they feel and just how awesome it is. Now, that really blessed me, Aubrey. She said, you know what? She said, she said, we heard your message and we learned our authority Friday night and we put it to use. And we put it to use. And so when I heard that, I thought to myself, you know, because I've shared this message multiple times and the fruit that I've seen as a result of this message has just been amazing. It's just been amazing. And honestly, not to go on and on about this, but honestly, like not uh, probably about a month and a half ago, I sat down to write a message. Now, let me tell you something. I can get on Facebook and I can, I can blah, 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 and shoot from the hip. And it just kind of, you know, I'm fine to do that. But whenever it comes to writing a message, like when I go places, I go with notes. I like to have notes in front of me. It's just the way I roll. So when it comes time for me to set up, to, to write a message, it's grueling. I don't know how pastors do it, honestly. It really is a gift. It really is a, an anointing. Uh, and, and I don't really know that I have it. Maybe I do. I don't know. Well, usually I don't. So, but I knew I needed to write a message. I was going to a church that I had been to multiple times and they had heard everything that I had. And so I'm like, all right, I got to come up with something new. And I wanted to create a message on the authority of the believer, right? And so I sat down at my computer and I began to come up with some ideas. And all of a sudden, this message just kind of poured out of me, honestly. I mean, it was amazing. I wrote this message in like 45 minutes to an hour. It just literally just as, as fast as I could type, this message came out. And so I've been preaching this and I have seen incredible fruit as a result of this message it's 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 an anointed message okay and i don't and i'm not like boosting myself i'm not saying yeah i'm so awesome but i am saying that god's word is awesome and god gave me revelation and there's nothing wrong with saying that so anyway so again like you know that that's kind of like my starting point here you know that 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 Aubrey and Stephen, they grabbed a hold of what I shared, of what God's word says concerning their authority, and they made a decision that they were uh, that they were going to uh, that they were going to step out. Right? They made a decision that they were going to step out, and they put their authority. They they put a demand on the authority that they have through the name of Jesus and they put an authority or a demand on the power that they have that they've been given as a result of the Holy Spirit and God and God was there he he met the need and the person was healed so i want you to know something concerning our authority okay uh it, you know in 1 Peter 5:8 it talks about how the devil how he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So check that out. It says seeking whom he may devour. Now, in other words, okay, there are people that the devil can devour and there's people that the devil cannot devour. There's people that, that you know, obviously there are some that are devoured and there's others that are not, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, the ones who are uh, who are there are Christians, okay. There are Christians who the devil can devour, and there are Christians that the devil cannot devour. Now, let me tell you a little secret here. You know, I've heard people say, "Oh, the devil's afraid of born again believers. The devil's afraid of Christians." Well, I'm here to tell you that the devil is not afraid of Christians. Okay, surprise, surprise. The devil is not afraid of a, well, uh, he's, he's afraid of spirit-filled Christians. No, he's not afraid of spirit-filled Christians. Well, well, then he's afraid of spirit-filled Christians who know that they have authority. No, he's not afraid of spirit-filled Christians who know that they have authority. Because if you ask any spirit-filled Christian, hey, do you know that you have authority? They'd say, oh, absolutely, I know that I have authority. 
No, uh, the devil is afraid of spirit-filled Christians who have a, who know they have authority, who actually use their authority. Okay, the devil is not afraid of any old Christian that know they have that knows they have authority, but he is afraid, and he does quake in his little boots over over Christians who are spirit-filled and know they have authority and use that authority. I remember going, I was in upstate New York one time and, you know, and, and I, and, and I was going to preach at this, uh, this little barbecue thing, this outside thing. And, uh, and so, uh, there was a woman that was going to be there that was in addiction. Okay. There was a woman that was going to be there that was in addiction. And, um, and basically, uh, you know, they want the, like the person who was setting it up wanted me to meet her, and so they pull up, and she's in the car, and they get out of the car, and 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 so May, my friend May says, "Hey, Kevin, come on over here. I want you to meet." And I think her name was Jennifer. I want you to meet Jennifer? And so I'm like, "All right." And so I start walking over. Jennifer lays eyes on me, and all of a sudden, her entire body starts shaking. I mean, I'm just like little, little, little me, you know, little bald me, little chubby me, you know, walk up, hey, although I'm, I think I'm becoming unchubby, I'm trying, still trying, by the way, I don't talk about that, anyway, I digress, so I walk up to, I walk up to Jennifer, and she immediately begins to shake, as the closer I get, the more she starts to shake, and she says, uh, she says, what's in you, man? And she says, I got to get away from him. And she takes off and goes into the woods. She takes off and goes into the woods and, no, and wouldn't come out. Why? Why? Not because there's anything scary about me. Not because there's, uh, not, not because there's, uh, you know, you know the, because I'm, uh, you know, so intimidating but the reality was that a demon can spot somebody a mile away who is filled with the Spirit of God, who knows that they have authority and is willing to wield that authority. That devil or the devils that were in her, they saw me and they said, rut rope, and they were out of here. That girl did not want to come anywhere near me. And that's not the only time that's happened. I've had that happen multiple times. I remember doing a service. I remember doing a service in uh, Arkansas. There was another woman who was, uh, she was a meth addict for 20 something, or 30 years. A methamphetamine addict for 30 years. We did the altar call. She was up there and I started walking towards her and her whole body began to shake. And I said, you spirit of, what was it? You spirit of addiction come out of her. And this demon cried out in a man's voice, no, goes down on the ground. She starts coughing. She gets delivered. A demon knows, can sense a person that walks in authority. Okay. Nothing special about me. That isn't special about any other believer that walks in authority, BTW. So anyway, yeah, that that's absolutely right, Lindsay. I mean, I the other day I was walking, I was walking through, uh, I was walking through Walmart, right, and I was wearing my Jesus sets free shirt, and I was watching people's. Re it was so funny. It was funny watching people's reactions. You don't you don't wear a shirt like that unless you know you have authority, right? You're I'm walking through Walmart, and these people are looking at my shirt in big black shirt with big bold white letters jesus sets free and these people are looking at me and they're going like this and they couldn't even look at the name of jesus right it's funny so anyway check this out the devil listen to what i'm saying here the devil will only eat what you feed him I'll say that again. The devil will only eat what you feed him. In other words, the devil, he, he's on a fast if you don't feed him. The devil doesn't eat if you don't feed him. So because, okay, now Matthew 28, 18 through 20, a very, very important scripture, okay? And it's more than just an important scripture because it's the great commission, okay? But it says... And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all 
authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Now, Jesus isn't just making this proclamation. I mean, here he is, like, he, he, you know, this is, this is his final words to the disciples. And they're kind of like, you know, he isn't saying, oh, by the way, I know you've been with me for like however long, you know, I know that you've been with me for these past couple years, but I feel like it's a good time to share with you now that, you know, I have like, I have like a lot of authority. I don't know if you knew this or not. no. He's saying this for a reason at the end, right before he leaves, right before he commissions them. He says, all authority has been given to me uh, in heaven and on earth. And now he's saying, now I'm basically I'm giving it to you. Now go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even till the end of the age. Now, because Jesus was given all authority, you, and you're going to hear this multiple times, you have been given all authority as well. So all authority is given to Jesus, who is the literal head of the church. And now when we say the church, we're not talking about a building, and we're also not even talking about a group of people, but we're talking about individuals. Do you know I'm the church, and you individually are the church, and together, corporately, we make up the church, and, you know, I, I, okay, you got it? So all authority has been given to Jesus, and Jesus is the literal, as born-again believers, okay, he is our head. Jesus is our head. All authority has been given to the head, so guess what? We are the body of Christ, therefore, that authority has also been given to the body. If it's given to the head, okay, my head is on my body. If my head has it, guess what else? Every Everything that my head has, my body has, okay? So he gave the, so the head was given authority, and so the, and then the head, because he's our head, because he's attached to us, we have authority. All right, I beat that to death. Okay, so the head doesn't walk independently of the body. If the head was given authority, then the body was as well. Jesus, okay, is seated. Where is he seated? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So what does the right hand of the Father, what does the right hand symbolize? If somebody sits at the right hand, they're sitting in the place of authority. The right hand symbolizes authority. So... The right hand being the place of authority, the moment you were born again, okay? Ephesians 2, 4, and 6 says that you were seated in Christ. So if Christ is seated in the place of authority, then guess what? You are as well. Ephesians 2, 4, and 6. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive with Christ. By grace, you've been saved and raised us up with him and seated, check it out, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The moment, the millisecond, the, uh, the, the, the very instant that you were born again, you inherited the name of Jesus. The moment you were born again, you inherited the name of Jesus. And all, 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 all of the authority that is in that name. If all authority in heaven and earth was given to Jesus, the head, then all authority in heaven and earth was given to you through that name. When we use the name of Jesus authoritatively, the enemy and all of his works, the enemy and all of his works, not just devils, not just demons, but all of the works that devils and demons produce must bow their knee at that name. Okay? Must bow their knee at that name. 
So Philippians 2, and, you know, and I want to say this, okay? I, I'm going to tell you what my pet peeve, well, what are, I got a few pet peeves, okay, in case you haven't noticed. Stick around, you'll hear my peeves all the time. Uh, but anyway, I got another one for you. What bothers me, what I don't understand, is when people pray in the name of God's Son, when they pray, oh, you know, amen. No, when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Say the name. Say the name. That's where the power is. That's where the authority is. It's in the name. We don't say, well, in and all these things we ask in the name of God's son. No, we say in the name of Jesus. That's where the authority is. All right. Now that you've heard my pet peeve, I can move on. All right. So Philippians 2, 8 and 11, it says, being found in appearance as a man... He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. For this reason also God highly exalted, I just spit, highly exalted him. Stick around, you'll see more of that. Highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the, the Father. The name of Jesus, powerful, power. There is power, power, wonder working power in the, oh, in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Also in the name too. Wonder working, there's amazing, all right, I'm gonna have to write a, write a song for that then, I guess, because I messed that up. All right, anyway. So my story as a new believer. So let me share with you when I first began to, when I first began to get a revelation of my authority. It was when I was, I was a wee little Christian. I was just born again. Okay. Now, most of you, you know my story. You know how, like I, like all, like I began to lose everything. I lost my job. I lost my friends. I lost, you know, had to move back in with my father and then my girlfriend. She dumps me the night I'm born again, okay? What preceded me being born again was finally my last little golden calf got shattered. That was my girlfriend. She had been my God for, I don't know, about six years. Well, anyway, God decided that he was going to shatter that golden calf. And so now I had no other gods before him. And I called on that she dumped me. And as I was getting ready to go in and kill myself, uh, I was going to go in and hang myself, literally. And, uh, you know, I'm watching her go... You know, say, you know, leave, and I'm like, bye, bye, Becky. All right? And I said, ah, oh, Jesus. And when I said his name, the presence of God came, and I was down on the ground, and I was, the Spirit of God came on me, the presence of God came on me, and I began to repent of my sins. I didn't even, like, like I wasn't looking for Jesus, you know, I just... I basically said his, took his name in vain. Ah, Jesus. And he went, whoosh. he's like, you rang? And I get delivered that night. I'm laying on my front lawn. I got demons coming out of me. I'm, and then the love of God just washing over me and just just really changing me. I mean, you talk about a, a Saul to Paul experience. That's me. I was a pretty, I was, I was like a Viking. I was, I was a depressed, angry suicidal, self-hating little Viking. And that night Jesus came and he, and he set me free. Well, anyway, moving forward, you know, I was like, things, everything was changing. My life was changing. However, like, like, you know, and I felt so much peace, but there was one thing that was really getting me. And it was, I kept getting these thoughts of, you know, like I wanted my girlfriend to come back. Like I wanted God to restore us. I wanted her to be saved. I wanted her to come back, right? But I, I decided I'm not going to go and stalk her. I'm not going to, I'm not going to creep on her. You know, I'm not going to do all those things that worldly men do. I decided, God, if she comes back, it's going to be because you bring her back, and it's not because I'm manipulating her or begging her or anything. But it's going to be by your spirit. And so that's what I did. So I didn't stalk her. I didn't creep on her. I didn't do any of that. And um, but I was being tormented by these thoughts, right? And the thoughts were, I wonder who Becky's with. It was like Satan's whispering in my ear. Yeah. 
I wonder what she's doing tonight. I wonder what she's doing it with. And it was like horrible, you know? I'm like, man, I don't want to think like this. I don't want these thoughts, God. I want to, I want to stay in peace, you know? And, uh, and so finally I tell my dad, my dad's like, so Kevin, how's everything going? I said, it's going good. I said, God is amazing. I said, he's revealing himself to me in crazy ways. Life is awesome. I said, but I got one problem. And I said, my one problem is that I keep thinking about Becky, like who she's with, what she's doing. She, and I said, and it's torture. And my father, he said something very, very profound and something that every believer needs to hear. And he said this, he said, Kevin, do you realize that as a Christian, you no longer have to think any thought that the devil wants you to think. You don't have to just accept the thoughts that the devil puts in your mind. He said, you, because of the name of Jesus, have authority over the thoughts that you think. And I was like, well, I did not know that. And he said, when those thoughts come into your mind, he said, you rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus and they'll leave. And I'm like, okay, we'll give it a whirl. And so, you know, 15 minutes later, all of a sudden, you know, the devil's seething little voice comes into my mind. I wonder who Becky is with. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, uh, I rebuke you. Thought goes flying out of my head. Right? 20 minutes later. Wonder what she's doing tonight. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, whoa. Like, and I, I decided that's not just a fluke. Two times in a row. Third time. Yeah. I wonder what she's going to be doing tonight. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I didn't even know what the word rebuke meant. Like, honestly, I didn't even know what the word rebuke meant. But I was saying it like I knew what it meant. It was the name of Jesus. It was the name of Jesus. It wasn't the word rebuke. It was the name of Jesus. And I, and I realized, like, oh, my goodness. Like, I don't have to think these stupid thoughts anymore. Like, I can take authority over these things, and I can command them to leave in the name of Jesus. And the devil must obey me. Well, that was 22 years ago. Here I am 22 years later, and I've learned a thing or two about authority. And, uh, and so now here we are. But that right there might be new revelation for some of you. You've been accepting whatever the devil wants. Remember what I said, that the devil will... Uh, uh, that he, he walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, at that moment, I learned that, okay, you're not going to devour me in that way anymore. I'm not going to feed you that, that way anymore. I'm going to take authority over my thoughts. That's why it says take captive every thought. Take captive every thought. Some of us, we just sit there and let the enemy just say whatever he wants to say, torment us any way he wants to torment us. And we just sit there and we take it like a defenseless little worm. Oh, I don't want to think like this anymore. Oh, God, would you please make it stop? No, you don't have to, you don't have to accept his, his, his words anymore. You have authority over your mind. You have authority over your thoughts. In the name of Jesus, I command that thought you leave now and you never come back in Jesus name. That is a word, Asa. Absolutely. So check this out. So that's when I first began to understand my authority. And I've been walking in this stuff, sometimes a little better than others. And mind you, when I preach this, I'm preaching to myself. I had a really good time this morning, kind of shaking myself and, and taking authority over the enemy as I was in prayer. So, you know, I don't sit here preaching as somebody who's like arrived because this is something that we have to be when it comes to using our authority, we have to be vigilant to use our authority. Okay. All right. So when you receive Jesus as your savior, and you were filled with the Spirit of God, all the power that was in Christ came to dwell on the inside of you. Did you know that? That when you received Jesus, you received all, all the power of the Holy Spirit. Like the Spirit of God came in, okay, 
And when the Spirit of God came in, he came in with everything he's got. You can't separate the power of the you can't separate the Holy Spirit from his power. Okay? Newsflash, revelation, you can't separate the Holy Spirit from his power. The Holy Spirit is power. When the Holy Spirit came in, his power came in with him. Okay? And when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, again, like I said, you received the name of Jesus and all of the authority that's in that name. So all power and all authority is currently yours. The fullness of it. The fullness of the fullness of the like all of the power that's in that the Holy Spirit that that is the Holy Spirit and all of the authority that is the name of Jesus. So now we've been to prayer meetings where you got that super spiritual guy or girl who sounds really good and says, "Ah oh Lord, oh God, give us more power." You know, remember I shared that message on more love, more power. You know, Lord, give us. More love, more power. Right? Remember that song? More power. Oh, God, give us more authority. Well, here's the news flash. It sounds really good. Sounds really spiritual. It sounds really anointed. But the, but the honest truth is this, that you're never going to receive more power than you've already received when you were born again. And when you were born again, you're never going to receive more authority than when you were born again. You got the fullness of it. Now, some of us, when it comes to the anointing, when it comes to the power, you received it all. Now, when we receive the baptism of the Spirit, we receive the ability to release it. Okay? Acts 1.8 says... And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, now we receive, we receive, we receive that power to release power. Okay, now, but when you receive the Spirit of God, you receive the fullness of, of who the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. All the authority. Okay, so check it out. So while you'll, you know, now I get people all the time messaging me and I have no problem with this, right? No problem with people contacting me wanting me to pray but you know but but here's but i gotta tell you this okay like people contact me to pray for this one or pray for that one like i have like some hotline to god some special hotline to god some hotline that maybe you don't have you know but honestly you know Everything that I've got, you've got. Like just like you've received, like just like when I was born again, I received all the, I received the Holy Spirit and all of His power. And when I was born again, I received the received the name of Jesus, the authority that's in the name. But guess what? When you were born again, you also received the Spirit of God and all the Holy Spirit's power, and you also received the authority in the name of Jesus, all of the authority, by the way. So, you know, you I don't have anything that you don't have, okay? Let me tell you, though, the difference between maybe you and me or you and somebody else that functions in the power of the Holy Spirit. The, the, difference, the difference between people that get results when they pray and people that don't get results when they pray Okay, the difference between people who get results when they pray and people that don't get results is not because one has more power and authority than the other. But the difference is the revelation. I have a revelation of the power that I receive through the Holy Spirit, and I have a revelation of the authority that I have through the name of Jesus. So while you'll never increase, so while the power and authority that you have will never increase, the revelation of that will increase. Okay, let me explain. Let me explain this now. So when I was, when, you know, I remember years ago, some dude said to me, Kevin, 
And it sounded really good, and it's kind of right to an extent. But he said, brother, I just, I just feel the Lord telling me that as you sow the anointing on you, that you're going to reap more anointing. That as you pray for people, the more you sow this, that the more you're going to, the more you're going to reap the more healings you're going to receive, more power you're going to receive. And okay, well, that's kind of wrong in a way, but I will say this. Now, when I first started out in this, okay, when I first started out in this, I was a little bit shaky. I was a little bit shaky. But as I, as I stepped out and I laid hands on people and I, and I, and I put it, and I made a decision, even though that I was fearful, even though that I was nervous, even though that I, I wondered, God, will you use me? I never doubted. I never doubted God's ability or his willingness, but I doubted God, but, but me, little old me, okay? But I believed God's word, and I believed that he was able and willing. So I would step out and I'd say, in the name of Jesus, I command by the way, I want to throw this in as a side note. God can work through your insecurities that say, God, will you use me? Like, like God's good with that. Like, like, the confidence is going to come. He can work through your insecurities like that. But what he can't work through is faithlessness. He can't work through... Well, God, I don't know if you're able or willing. He can he can work he can work through our the insecurities that we have in ourselves, but he can't work through faithlessness, unbelief. Little side note. So anyway, here here I am, okay, here I am, and like I, you know, and I and I and I'm stepping out on this in on shaky little legs, and I put my hand on somebody, I said in the name of Jesus, I remember, I still remember is the dude's name was uh was Vince. I still remember, like the guy was like in a wreck. He was in a, you know, he was in a car accident, shattered his knee. Guy was like in a bad. It was in bad shape, right? And uh, so I told him, I said, I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I'm going to pray for you. And I remember I was really nervous. Okay, God, we're going to give it a whirl. And I put my hand on the guy's knee, and I said, and I spoke and I prayed authoritatively. I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this knee to come back together. I literally felt the guy's His knee, chink, 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 come back together. Guy jumps up, his knee had been shattered. Felt his bones come back together. He gets up, he's jumping up and down. Healed, gave his life to Christ as a result. The next day, okay, I see this lady, she's got breast cancer. I'm like, okay, we're gonna give her another whirl. And I put, again, put a demand on that power and lo and behold, the Lord healed that woman completely of breast cancer. And guess what was happening? What was happening was, uh, what, what was taking place was I was beginning to gain a confidence in the anointing that was in me. I was beginning to gain a confidence in my authority, which as my confidence increased, it equated to faith. My faith was built. The more my faith was built, the more I began to step out, the more I began to step out, the more I began to see, the more I saw, the more confident I became in what I have, the more faith was created, I stepped out even more. And then more, and it began to snowball until here I am right now when I pray for somebody, I fully believe that God is going to do what I, what. You know, that I, I fully believe that sickness and demons are going to do what I command them to do because God has shown me, God has given me a confidence in the anointing. He's given me a confidence in the name of Jesus. See, we know what we have because of what the Bible tells us. But when it comes to this, when it comes to this, it doesn't become, I mean, and really anything in the word of God doesn't become concrete in us until we start acting on it. Now, we've, we've heard that if we sow financially, that, that God is, that, that there will be, that God will bless us, right? And so, 
you know, when we first start out, we're like, okay, this is what the word of God says. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to trust it. And so then we sow that money. And then all of a sudden we see, we see, you know, the windows of blessing opening. And all of a sudden we become, then we, it becomes solidified in us. We know that if we sow, that we're not, that, that we're never going to make, that we're never going to get, you know, have less. That we know that there's a blessing when it comes to sowing. We, we, but we started out kind of on shaky little legs saying, okay, this is what the word of God says. And the more we do it, the more we sow, right? Okay, you got me. Same thing when it comes to the power and the authority, okay? We start on shaky little legs. We know what the word of God says. So we're like, okay, God, I'm feeling a little insecure about this, you know, but, but okay, God, your word says it. So in the name of Jesus, I command. The more you put a demand on the power of the Holy Spirit, and the more you put a demand on the authority in the name, the more you're going to see, and the more your confidence is going to grow. You, the, the revelation of power and authority becomes concrete as we put it to use. Okay? All right. So now, hopefully, I'm going to teach myself out of a job. So... I'm going to tell you the issue for a lot of people in the church is a lot of people in church. Okay. Now, if you were to go, if you were to go and you were to ask any believer, okay, if I were to take a poll and say, Hey, do you know that you have power through the Holy Spirit? Do you know that you have authority through the, through the name of Jesus? Every believer would say, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, of course I know that. Okay. But honestly, most of most of the people in, in the in the Western church really don't know that. And I'm not like, you know, and I'm not being judgmental. I'm just I'm just, you know, walk, going from church to church doing what I do. You know, a lot of people look at what I do. They look at me like I'm a bug under a microscope. Like, oh, my goodness, this guy's so peculiar. This guy's so peculiar. Like, honestly, like miracle signs and wonders are amazing. And beautiful and awesome. But honestly, they really, you know, and they, and like, I, like, like people, they see the power of God. They see the power of God and they gasp. Yesterday I was at a church in uh, West Virginia. And, and so I had somebody, I said, all right, come on, everybody, gather around. And I took the guy's legs and I said, in the name of Jesus' leg, or the woman's leg, in the name of Jesus grow. Her leg grew that far, and I could hear all the gasps in the background. All the people that were watching. <gasps> Did you see that? It was amazing. It, it was amazing, but you know what? It shouldn't be that amazing. This is, this is the life that we're meant to live. This is, this is the life that we're meant to live, <laughs> right? I remember my daughter, funny man, or no, my son. Well, both my daughter and my son. I remember they were, my son was about, I don't know, he's like eight years old, nine years old. And we're all sitting there having dinner and I'm telling Amy, I'm sharing this testimony about somebody that was healed, right? And I'm like, yeah, it was, it was wild, you know, it was awesome, yeah. And my son, he's like eating his little pork chop or whatever he's eating, he's like, What's a big deal about healing? And so he said, he said, what's a big deal about healing? And then my daughter chimes in. She's about seven, six or seven. And she's like, yeah, what's a big deal about healing? And then they're like, yeah, this, it's, that's just what we do. And I was like, oh, my goodness. If the whole, if the church could get this, re the revelation that this, like, nine-year-old and this, you know, six-year-old, seven-year-old had. Like, what's the big deal? This, this is just what we do. This is who we are. This is who we are. But the, but the church, you know, the church doesn't have the, this revelation of power and authority that they've received. Right? 
We exercise power and authority by faith, okay? Romans 10, 17 tells us that, the faith, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, we know what we have because of what God's word tells us what we have. But like I said before, we gain confidence in God's word. <laughs> we know what we have because God's word tells us what we have, but we gain confidence in God's word by doing what God's word tells us that we can do. I got people that are like, well, I don't know, Kev, I can never pray for the sick and see him healed. I can never cast out a demon. I can never do this and I can never do that. And I can never, and they say this stuff without ever even attempting. And I say to them, how do you know what you can do or what you can't do? The devil's convinced you that you couldn't do it and you believed it, so you don't do it. To get a revelation of the Spirit's power, we must do the things. We have to attempt to do the things that place a demand on the power of the Spirit. In order to do, in order to do, in order to get a revelation of the Spirit's power, we have to attempt to do the things that place a demand, that place a demand on the power of the Spirit. To receive an ever-increasing revelation of authority, okay, in the same way, we have to begin to exercise our authority. All right, so now let's talk about what exactly do we have authority over? So what do we have authority over? So check it out. 1 John 3, 8, it says, The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. As it says, now, he came to... What are the works of the devil? The works of the devil are sin. Sin is the work of the devil. So Jesus, in dealing with our sin, okay, he also dealt with all of the fruit that that sin produced. Okay? So Jesus, again, in dealing with sin... Okay, the root was sin. He dealt with the root and therefore all the fruit that grew from that root, he dealt with that as well. Okay. So on the cross, Jesus made provision for our forgiveness, right? On the cross, Jesus Jesus made it possible for us to receive forgiveness and to be, be made clean from our sin. On the cross, he also dealt with heal. He, he also dealt with sickness and made provision for healing. That's why it says, by his stripes, you were healed, right? On the cross, he also made provision for our freedom from demonic bondage, right? And on the cross, he made provision for our prosperity. Now, let's take let's think about law enforcement. Okay, let's think about a state trooper. You know, so law enforcement. Okay, state troopers. They are ambassadors. They are ambassadors of the states that they represent. So you, if we see, now I'm in Pennsylvania, so a PA state trooper is an ambassador of the state of Pennsylvania. And their badge, the badge that they received, gives them the authority to enforce the law. Now, they, when they receive that badge, they receive all, author, all the authority of the state of Pennsylvania back them. So they so when they receive that badge, all the authority in the state of Pennsylvania is backing them, okay? Now, check this out. When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are then we become ambassadors of Christ. We're ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Now, as ambassadors of the kingdom of God, all authority of heaven and earth, or, all, or rather all authority, all the authority of heaven 
is backing us. Okay? When we command sickness and demons, when we command sickness and demons, all the authority of heaven is backing us. Right? Now, it's just like if a cop stands in front of a car and, 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 okay, a cop stands in front of a car and, you know, a car's coming down and he stands in the middle of the road and he puts his hand up. Guess what? You're going to stop. You're not stopping because that cop himself is more powerful than you. Because that cop has no, no ability to keep your car from not moving forward. The cop in, in his own strength has no ability to keep you from, from not keep going, right? However, you're not stopping because of the power that's because of the power that that cop possesses in himself, but you're stopping because of the authority behind that hand. And when, when we deal with sickness and we deal with demons, okay, some people are like, well, I'm just a nothing, I'm just a worm, blah, 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 you know, okay. In your own strength, in your own power, you have no ability, you have no, no nothing over sickness and demons. And sickness and demons are not, they're not, they're not, uh, you know, uh, they're not uh, responding to you because you're so awesome or because, or anything like that. But they are respond, but they must respond to the authority that backs us. That's why I say there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about me. Or name your guy, Todd White, Randy Clark, Smith Wigglesworth. Nothing special about the man. But it's the revelation that the man has of the authority. It's the authority and the power that's backing, that's backing the man. That's why. You get a hold of this, you can do the same exact things. That right there, what I just said, is, is major. Right? What I just said is absolutely major. Nothing special about any man or woman that functions in this. But what is special, what gets the job done, is the authority behind that man. The authority that's backing that man or that woman. All right. So 2 Corinthians 5.20 tells us that we're ambassadors of Christ. As ambassadors of Christ, it's literally, check this out, Revelation time. <coughs> Revelation. <coughs> All right, enough of that. As an ambassador of Christ, it's literally the church's job, your job, because you are the church, remember? To enforce, just like it's the cop's job, and just like it's the cop or the state trooper's job to enforce the law, as a born-again believer, it's every one of our job to enforce everything that Christ achieved on the cross. It's our job to carry out the ministry of Christ. That's why he said it's better, it's better that I go away so that the helper can come. So Jesus went away, the Spirit of God came, took up residence in all of us, empowered us that we might go out and enforce everything that was done at the cross. To enforce, to enforce salvation, preaching the gospel. Uh, he's anointed, the Spirit of God has anointed us to preach the gospel. The Spirit of God has anointed us to heal the sick. The Spirit of God has anointed us the authority that we have to cast out devils, to take authority over poverty, right? It's, it's, it's our job now. Jesus is not walking the earth. We are now his ambassadors given the fullness of power and the fullness of the authority to do the works of Jesus. And don't you think it's kind of funny that every time somebody that they were that they were sent, every time that they were commissioned, they were commissioned to function in kingdom power. 
when Jesus, when Jesus sent, when he sent the, where is it? When he sent the, uh, when he sent the 12, um, when Jesus sent the 12, we'll look at, we'll take a look at Mark, uh, Mark 6, uh, 7 through uh, 7 and 8, 7 through 13. What does it say? It says, and he summoned the 12 and began to send them out in pairs and gave them what? Authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey except a mere staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals. And he added, do not put on two tunics. And he said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And any place that does not receive you or listen to you, you shake off the dust. Uh, listen to you as you go out from there, shake off the dust of the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. And they went out and they preached that men should repent. And they were casting out many demons and they were anointed with oil, many sick people. And they were, and were anointing with oil, many sick people and healing them. How about the 72? How about the 72? That's in, uh, Luke 10, 8, and 9. Luke 10, 8, and 9. It says, and he said them, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat what's set before you and heal those in it who are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Every place, every time people are sent out, they're sent out to function in the power of the Holy Spirit. They're given authority to go out and function in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now finally, we see in Mark 16, 15 and 18, it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. And he who is believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who have believed in my name. They'll cast out demons, right? They'll speak with, in my name, the name that's above all names, the name that the authority is in, in my name. They'll cast out demons, they'll speak with new tongues, they'll pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them, and they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Why? Because you are sent out to be an ambassador, and as an ambassador, you have authority over demons. You have authority over sickness. You have authority over things that come against you, right? The authority that, and by the way, BTW, the authority that you have isn't just for other people, but if you drink something deadly, you have authority over that. If you get bitten by a snake, you have authority over that as well. We have authority over the things that have come against people, and we have the authority that, for things that come against us. Boy, I just got that just right now. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's easy, you know, when we read that verse to skip over, you know, the deadly poison and the snake part. But what he's saying is you have authority over what affects what affects people that you're ministering to, but also you have authority over the stuff that would try to come against you. Shoot. All right. So in other words, we have all been called to take dominion over the enemy and to advance the kingdom of God on this earth. Wow, man, I've been, we've been, well, there's an hour. We still got a little while to go. So now I want to talk about the things that have hindered, that hinder our prayers. So I want to talk about the things that hinder our prayers. So the things that hinder our authority. Well, the greatest hindrance to our prayers being answered is a lack of understanding concerning how to pray. And I've found that there's even a lot of pastors that don't know how to pray. And that's not like, I'm not like knocking, you know, anybody, but, but there are certain prayers that get answered and there's certain prayers that do not get answered. Now, Lord, if it be your will, prayers, they don't get answered. They don't get any results. So when praying for healing or deliverance, it's imperative that we be fully assured of God's will to save, to heal, and deliver. If you're not fully assured of that, then you cannot pray in faith. 
If you're not sure about something, okay, does that make sense? That if you're not sure about something, you can't pray in faith concerning that thing. And the whole ki the kingdom of God and accessing the blessings of the kingdom and accessing the power of the Holy Spirit, it hinges on our faith. The law of faith is this, right? There's a law of faith. We find it in Mark 11, 22 and 23. And Jesus answered them saying, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Now concerning healing, we know that Jesus went to the cross to destroy the works of the devil. He went to deal with sin. And we know that in dealing with sin, he dealt with all the fruit of sin. Sickness being a fruit of sin. If Jesus went to kill the root, then he went to kill all the fruit. So he doesn't turn around and, and, and put sickness on people or, you know, he doesn't turn around and say, well, I know that, you know, uh, I dealt with sin and sickness. But for you, well, I'm kind of willing that you have sickness. No. Sickness is not God's will. So it's very important. It's very important that we start from the place of it's God's will. Yeah, but Kevin, I've been prayed for a bunch of times and it just doesn't happen. So I kind of think that, you know, well, you know, it's uh, that's probably the, the thorn in my flesh, uh, the cross that, I, that I'm meant to carry, uh, the burden I got to bear. You know, I'll stop it, would you already? Okay, like, like I, I've said this before, you know, there's so many people that are lowering their expectation to the level of their experience instead of raising their expectation, raising their, their, their expectation to the level of what God's word says. So check it out. Now, I've seen, I've seen way too much. Either it's God's will to heal all the time or it's not God's will to heal. Because if it isn't God's will to heal all the time, then you cannot, but you cannot believe what you say is going to happen and have no doubt in your heart. Okay? If you don't believe that it's God's will all the time, then God can't expect us to have faith in for this, can he? And I don't know. I've seen way too much happen. I've seen way too many people get healed. To believe that God is not willing and able, okay? You know that's a that's a big that's a big thing that I just said because there's a lot of believers. You know, I find I find that you know going into uh, charismatic churches where they believe in healing and they believe in all that business, right? They go in. They go into. They like I go into these charismatic churches, and honestly. Um, Churches like that is where I see the least amount of people get healed. Right? Here's why. And I know this to be true. They've been, they've been, they've been taught, they, the healing thing has been talked up and people, they've been prayed for a million times. And, um, and they'll all say, oh, God's able, God's willing. But then when I ask them this question, is God able and willing to heal you? Uh, I, I hope so. If Jesus went to the cross to deal with sin and its fruit, okay, then it's not God's will, period. Then it's not God's will, period. Right? God is able, God's willing. Anyway, I better move on. So before you pray, you have to decide in your heart, is Jesus always a savior? The answer is yes. Is he always a deliverer? The answer is yes. Is he always a healer? The answer is yes. If you can't say yes to those questions, if you can't answer yes to all of them, then you are actually better off not praying for somebody until you can answer yes. 
because all you're going to do, if you can't answer yes to them, if you're mamby pamby about where you where you think God stands on healing, if you're mamby pamby about where God stands on deliverance, if you're mamby pamby about where God stands on salvation, okay, and you're praying mamby pamby prayers, all you're going to do is hurt the faith of a person that's receiving from you. I've seen it. I've seen people healing services. One people getting healed. At one after the next, after the next, after the next, and then the woman with on the walker sits in her seat. And I walk up to her and I say, Why aren't you coming up for prayer? She said, Because I've been prayed for a million times and I can't bear to not get healed again. So it's easier for me. It's easier for me to just accept this. But if you can answer yes to those questions, if you do believe that God is always a savior. That he's always looking to save, that he's always looking to heal, that he's always looking to deliver, then you pray like you stink and mean it. You command, you command like you expect it to happen. Kenneth Hagin Sr. tells this story about a time when Jesus visited him and began to teach him concerning his authority. Okay? Jesus began to speak, and immediately a monkey-looking imp came in between Jesus and Hagen. And this little monkey started going, yaggity, 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 yaggity. And, and he was so loud that Hagen couldn't hear what Jesus was saying. Finally, you know, G Hagen's like, man, I wonder what's up with this. What's he going to do about this? Well, anyway, Jesus gets up. He walks out of the room. Hagen heard nothing. Next night, same thing happened. Open vision. Jesus comes walking in, sits down, begins to t teach him about his authority. Same little demon. Yaggity, 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 yaggity. And again, Hagen's like, man, why will he not do anything about this? Jesus gets up, leaves. Next night, third night, same deal. Jesus he has an open vision. Jesus comes walking into the room, sits down in the chair, begins to teach about his authority. Same little demon. Yaggity, 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 yaggity. Finally, Hagen. Sick of this little demon. Wondering what Jesus, what, what's going on with Jesus, why he's allowing this. Finally, he, yell, he, he shouts over the demon. He says, Jesus, why aren't you doing anything about this? And Jesus replied, because I went to the cross. I died. I rose again, and I've given you authority to do something about this. Jesus said, I've done everything that I could do. And at that point, Hagen looks at this little imp and he says, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out of here. And he said, when he said that, it looked like somebody beat that little devil, tucked its tail between its legs and started... Running away like it just got beat. See, Jesus didn't do anything with that demon because he gave Hagen authority to do something about that demon. What I see is another hindrance to answered prayer is when we slip into this beggarly mode. Right? We slip into this beggarly mode when we beg God to do what he's already done. 1 Peter 2.24 says that by the stripes of Jesus, by his stripes, we were healed. Jesus made the provision for your healing. On the cross, Jesus made the provision for your deliverance. On the cross, Jesus made the, the provision for, for your uh, for, um, prosperity. And so here we are begging Jesus, oh God, oh God, my son. He's so lost. God, would you save him? God, would you open his eyes? Oh, God. Would you, oh, God, I'm dealing with this in my body. Oh, God, I'm so sick. Oh, God, this is happening to my mother. Oh, God, blah, blah, blah. And, we're, and we slip into this beggarly mode. And when we pray like that, we're not praying in faith. Instead of begging God to do what he's already, God already made the provision for your son's salvation. God already made the provision for your son's deliverance. God made the provision for the healing of your mother. God made the provision for the healing of your body. Instead of going to God and begging him, 
it's time now that we that we start walking in power and authority that we've been given. So instead of saying, oh Lord, would you please do this? And oh Lord, would you please do that? We say, in the name of Jesus, devil, I command you to take your hands off my son's eyes and off his ears. And I command you to... To, to, to release him. And I thank you, Father, for releasing clarity to my son. I thank you, Father, that, Lord, he hears your, that he hears the gospel and that he believes and he receives. How about this? In the name of Jesus, I command you, devil, you take your hands off of my mother's body. In the name of Jesus, I now release the healing anointing into my mother's body. In Jesus' name, I thank you that the yoke or that the, that the anointing is breaking the yoke of sickness in her body. How about this? Oh, Lord, would you please send us money? Oh, God, I don't know how we're going to pay our bills. Oh, God, would you please? In the name of Jesus, right now, I speak to that devil that's had its hands on my finances. In the name of Jesus, I command you to release my finances. I thank you, Father. Your word declares that you, that you will supply our need according to your riches and glory. And Father, I believe it in Jesus' name. Now, let's think about something here. What kind of prayer do you think is going to get answered? Oh, God. Oh, God, would you please? Oh, God, would you do this? Oh, God, would you do that? Instead, you're like, somebody might be saying, How, well, I could never, I could never demand God to do anything, you know? Who are we, Kev? Who are we to demand God to do anything? No, i tell you something, man. You're not demanding God to do anything. You're demanding, you are taking the authority that's been given to you you're taking the authority that you that you that has been given to you because of what Jesus said on the cross and you are now taking dominion over the enemy who is killing and stealing and destroying and not only are you taking using wielding the authority that you've been giving you but now you are releasing the power of the holy spirit into that situation Jesus God isn't up in heaven saying oh my goodness who's this guy I think he is no God saying yes he or she is using what I died to give them, using the authority that they have, using the power that they have through the Holy Spirit. Look, this, this right here, what I'm teaching you, makes all the difference in the world as to whether you're going to be a victim to the devil or you're going to be a victor over the enemy. If you are, if you are not using your authority, you are a victim if you're not using your authority, the devil is going to eat your stinking lunch and he's eating way too many people's lunch in the church. I mean, this morning, man, this morning I got up, right? And I, you know, and there's been, God's doing a lot of work in me and I realized that the enemy has been kind of smacking me around a little bit. This is something that I've been, that I've been realizing over the past like couple weeks, you know, and I got up this morning and I was like, in the name of Jesus, right now I speak to you, devil. I command you, like I'm praying over my, I was praying over my wife this morning, right? Praying, praying over my wife. My wife, you know, she's she's dealing with this this taste thing. You know, she hasn't had her taste back since COVID. And I was standing in my place of authority. This morning I said, in the name of Jesus, devil, I command you, you take your hands off my, my wife's body. You take your hands off my wife's taste. And I command right now in the name of Jesus, I command her taste be restored in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for the healing anointing released in her body, activating whatever needs activated, causing her to taste in Jesus' name. You know, even my own issues, you know, Lord, where I've dealt with, where I've dealt with rejection issues in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the spirit of rejection. I take authority over the spirit of jealousy in the name of Jesus. I break the power that you've had over my life. And in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave my life. And I declare that I'm a son of God. I declare that, uh, that, that your banner over me is love and that father, that I'm not, that I don't have to, uh, that I've not received the spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption by which I cry, Abba, Father. You know, I mean, look, we take a, we don't pray like little worms anymore. We don't pray like we like we're defenseless anymore. It's time that that stops. Now we begin to pray 
like we've been given authority. We pray like we've got the spirit of God in us, the spirit of power. When we start, when we start praying like that, that's when we're going to start to see things happen. And one, one more thing before I close this thing out. One more thing before I close this baby out. Okay, so I'm sitting there and I'm saying, okay, Father, I think, you know, right now in the name of Jesus, I've not received the spirit of fear that, you know, uh, you know, but a spirit of adoption, blah, 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 you know, or, or you know, or, or Lord, I thank you, Father, that, uh, you know, that my wife's mouth is in there. Her taste comes back at G. If I turned around and say, yeah, you know what? I was just talking to Cindy across the street there, and here it is like three, you know, two years now. She still hasn't had her taste back. How many times do we go and we speak the word of God, we make our declarations, but then we negate everything we say by speaking faithless words. Double, it's called being double-minded. Being double-minded, speaking one way. Oh, yes, I believe 100%. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes I am healed. And then you go home, you're like, oh, Harold, this back thing, it's never going to quit. Well, let me tell you a little secret, okay? So your, your, um, your words of faith will not negate, will not negate your faithless words. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. Your words of faith will not negate your faithless words. But your faithless words, your faithless words will 100% negate your faith declaration. So from here on out, we no longer prophesy what the enemy is speaking. Do you know that both God and the devil are making us promises in too many stinking times? We grab a hold of the devil's promises. Well, I can see it and I can feel it and I can hear it. So it's easier for me to grab a hold of what I see. Keep this in mind. There's two, there's two that are speaking. The devil's speaking and Jesus is speaking. Now, whatever you grab a hold of and whatever you believe and speak after, that's what you're going to have. Now, you can either have what the devil's saying or you can have what Jesus is saying. By the way, the devil's father of lies and Jesus is the truth. The devil's word is lies. Jesus' word is the truth. Choose wisely who you're going to believe and speak after. All right. In closing, I told you, man, I told you this is going to be a serious message. Didn't I tell you that? In closing, let's stop tolerating the enemy. Let's stop tolerating the devil. You're not a powerless, defenseless worm. You have authority. And you have power that is activated, well, that's activated by faith. You have power through the Holy Spirit that's activated when you use your authority. God has made promises in his word to you for peace and health and prosperity and deliverance. These promises are for you and for those who you love. It's time that we stop rolling over accepting the devil's promises. The Lord is calling you to attention. You're a soldier, you're a mighty warrior, even if you don't feel like it. You're in God's army. Armed with the knowledge of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit to drive back the enemy. Jesus has crushed the enemy. And now your job is to enforce the victory. Your job is to enforce the victory. Your willingness to use your authority activates your power over the enemy. You hear me? Your willingness, your willingness to use your authority activates power 
over the enemy. It's time that you wake up, sleeper. Wake up to what you've been given. Wake up to wake up to what you have. Throw off the victim mentality. Rant, rant, rant. Throw off that Eeyore, that Eeyore talk. Come out of fear. Quit complaining. Swing your sword. And now go cut off some dragon heads. Remember, when you pray for people, you pray like you expect something to happen. In the name of Jesus, I command. In the name, not, we don't have to pray, God, would you please show up and do this? Oh, God, would you please do that? In the name of Jesus, I command. Obviously, it's the power. You're like, but it's, but it's God that does it. It's God. Obviously. But it's the Spirit of God in you. It's the authority that you have through the name of Jesus and the power that you have through the Spirit so you can command in the name of Jesus. I command healing. I command healing in this back, in Jesus' name. Right now, I release the healing anointing in Jesus' name. Trust me. Stephen and Aubrey. Remember, I started this by telling you the story of Stephen and Aubrey. They heard this message Friday night. They said, you know what? I have authority. And so they made a decision. Okay, I have it. And now I'm going to go act on it. They put a demand on, on the power of the Holy Spirit. They walked in their authority. And guess what? They saw people. They saw people get delivered and they saw people get healed. They had never done it before, but they made a decision. I'm going to step out and I'm going to use it. This is for every believer. There's nothing special about anybody. Buddy, contrary to what, contrary to what they want you to think, contrary to what you've been told, contrary to there's nothing different about. It's not because there's some man, because because some man is powerful, but it's because of what is backing that man. It's not because somebody's extra special. It's not because somebody, you know, I mean, I had a struggle with pornography. By the way, today, five years ago to this day, five years ago today was the last time I looked at pornography. Come on, Jesus. But guess what? While I was looking at pornography, I functioned in healing. I functioned in deliverance. It wasn't because of how good I was. It wasn't because of how bad I was. But it was because even though I, I was in sin... Even though I was in sin, even though that I was messing up all over the place, didn't want to, I still knew my authority. I still had faith in God's word. And I put a demand on it. It wasn't because I was such a good guy or such a bad guy, but it was because it was, it was because of the power and the authority that was backing me. Anyway. I want to hear testimony. I want you guys to go and put a stinking demand. I want you to go and put a demand on God's power. Okay? I want you to put a demand on the authority that you have. And you watch. You watch what, what's out. Here's the script, okay? Here's the script. When you pray, okay? If I'm going to pray for somebody's shoulder right now, okay? This is what I would say. I would put my hands on their shoulder and I would say, just like this, in the name of Jesus, I command any demonic spirit afflicting the shoulder, I command it to leave now, and I command healing to be released in this shoulder, in Jesus' name. Right now, I release the healing anointing in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to keep my hand on that shoulder, and they're going to fit, and even now, as I say that, I could feel... I could feel the power of God in my hands, even, even demonstrating this. In the name of Jesus, I command every demonic thing. You release their shoulder, and I command, the, I command healing be released in the shoulder. And I, I now release the power of the Holy Spirit for healing in Jesus' name. That's the way. We don't have to go, oh, Lord, would you please? And we don't have to get off on a tangent, you know. Oh, Lord, God, I know that you love them so much. And, Oh God, I know. No, you stick to the script. In the name of Jesus, I command. When we pray like that, we pray. When you're when you get off it, uh, going down that rabbit trail, you're getting out of faith. 
When you say, in the name of Jesus, I command. In the name of Jesus, I command. You are praying like you expect something to happen. You're taking authority over sickness. You're taking authority over devils. And you're commanding sickness and devils to submit. And then you release the power of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? Whammo. Awesomeness. Yesterday, I wish you guys could have all been at the meeting yesterday. I mean, to see some of the things that we saw yesterday. Guy, 90-something years old. This dude couldn't hear a single word. I walk up to the guy. I got my books. I'm trying to sell my book. You know, I need a table. For my, I walk up to this guy. I'm like, hey, do you know where I can get a table? The guy looks at me like, he's like, and then somebody's like, yeah, he's deaf. He can't hear anything. Yesterday during the service, afterwards, I'm like, all right, come on. Come on over here. This guy couldn't hear a word. I put my hand on his ears. I said, in the name of Jesus. I said, ears open. I said, I put my hand over my face. I said, can you hear me? He said, I can hear you. I walked back, turned my back to him. I said, can you hear me? He said, I can hear you. I walked away. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Not just me, though. Remember the woman? How about the, but the woman who uh, uh, the, the pastor had told her her baby died? And the pastor said, it's because she didn't have faith that the baby died. She, for the last 20 years, she believed she didn't have faith. I kicked that demon out of her. She came up. She was like, would you pray for me for that? I said, absolutely. We broke, we, she, she forgave him. We broke that curse he pronounced over her, kicked the demon of unbelief out of her. She got set free. A woman comes up, says, hey, would you pray for my back? I said, sure. I said, hey, come on over here. Put your hand right there. And this is what I want you to say. She said, in the name of Jesus, I now command your back to be healed. That woman went, wham, went out in the spirit. She got, she was out cold. She got up, back was completely healed. I looked at that lady. I said, who doesn't have faith? She was like beside herself. We start putting a demand on that. We start stepping out in this. If you don't step out in it, you're never going to believe you have it. Like what you read in the Bible will only carry you so far when it comes to this stuff. Now, now you start acting on what you've read in the word of God. Anyway. All right, guys. God bless you guys. I hope that this blessing, because I'll tell you what, this teaching blessed me. I was preaching to myself. God revealed some things to me. I'm excited. All right. God bless y'all. Love you guys. Really do love you. I so appreciate you guys that you get on here and listen to me. And uh, it's such a blessing to me. Thank you guys for everybody that supports the ministry. Thank you guys for everybody who prays for me. We, I could not, honestly could not do that, do this. And I know everybody said, everybody has to say this, but I'm, but I mean it when I say it. I honestly couldn't do this without you guys. Thank you guys for enabling me to, to do this. Appreciate you all. Love you so much. We'll see ya.